In this lesson, I will discuss about prematurity and its complications. A delivery date is determined at 280 days after the first day of last menstrual period. However, only 4% of pregnant women actually deliver at 280 days. And only 70% of delivery occurs within 10 days of the estimated delivery date. Infants born before 37 weeks from the first day of LMPR termed premature by WHO. We classify premature babies as extremely premature if infants born before 28 weeks and very preterm if infants born between 28 to 32 weeks and moderate preterm those born between 32 to 34 and late preterm if they are born between 34 to 30, uh, seven weeks post menstrual age the other classification is also based on birth weight we classify preterm babies as extremely low birth weight if birth weight is less than one kg very low birth weight if infant is between 1 to 1.5 kg and low birth weight if infant is between 1.5 to 2.5 kg at birth approximately 50 million infants are born preterm each year worldwide this accounts for approximately 1 in every 10 babies born and the overwhelming majority of high-risk infants. So from 10, 1 infant is preterm. The etiology of preterm birth is multifactorial and involves complex interaction between fetal, placental, uterine and maternal factors. From fetal, fetal distress, multiple gestations and death. High drops can cause uh, premature delivery. Placental disorders such as placenta previa and abrasion can also cause preterm delivery. Bicornate uterus, incompetent cervix, or premature dilation of cervix can predispose for preterm delivery. From maternal factors, previous preterm delivery, preeclampsia, black race, Chronic medical illness such as heart disease, renal disease, thyroid disease, uh, other chronic respiratory problems, short interpregnancy interval, obesity infection, drug abuse, and the young or advanced mother knowledge can predispose for premature delivery. And other causes such as premature rupture of membrane, polyhydraminos, iatrogenic and assisted reproductive technology, and the trauma predispose also for preterm delivery. However, most preterm births are spontaneous without an identifiable cause. So most premature delivery or premature uh, labor is due to uh, unknown or spontaneous preterm labor. Examination and assessment is needed to distinguish SCJ or IGR infants from preterm infants. Normally, neurologic maturity or nerve conduction velocity in the absence of asphyxia correlates with gestational age despite reduced fetal weight so despite uh, the fetal weight neurologic maturity can tell as the gestational age of the infant physical time may be useful in estimating gestational age at birth so we use ballard scoring system this ballard scoring system is used most of the time to assess the gestational age within 72 hours of life and it's accurate to within two weeks of actual gestational age when we see complication of prematurity, prematurity has immediate and delayed complications. From immediate complications, there are complications like hypothermia, hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, respiratory distress in them, IVH, increased susceptibility to infection, necrotizing enterocolites, persistence of ductus arteriosus, feeding problems, anemia of prematurity, Retinopathic prematurity and the metabolic bondage of prematurity. Normally, premature babies are at risk of having hypothermia. This is because of different reasons. From this, high surface area to body weight ratio, lethal subcutaneous fat, muscular inactivity, and decreased brown fat, and also immature heat regulation mechanisms. Uh, they all contribute to development of hypothermia in preterm babies. So we should have to appropriately follow their temperature after delivery. 
Hypoglycemia is common due to lack of glycogen stores and immature hepatic and autonomic response due to their premature age. Early hypocalcemia occurs due to immaturity of hormonal control system. Premature babies are also at risk of respiratory problems. They develop respiratory distress syndrome or high membrane disease due to surfactant deficiency, which may cause respiratory failure. There is also called apnea of prematurity because of immaturity of respiratory center that leads to periodic freezing and the frequent apneic spells. IVH is also common in preterm infants due to immature vasculature of the CNS, disturbed cerebral autoregulation of blood flow and clotting factor deficiency uh, due to immature liver. They are also at risk of infection. It results from lack of protective maternal immunoglobulin, which are transferred across the placenta during the last trimester. In addition to this, delicate surface of skin and the mucous membrane also predisposes to infection. Insertion of IV cannula, endotracheal tubes, energy tubes, uh, or other iatrogenic causes also increase the risk of infection in preterm babies. Preterm babies are also at increased susceptibility to develop necrotizing enterocolites due to immaturity of gut endothelial surface and enzyme deficiency. The risk increases with lack of breastfeeding and also formula feeding, umbilical catheterization, and septicemia. They are also at risk of having feeding problems. This results from uncoordinated sucking and swallowing, and also from gastroesophageal reflex leading to frequent aspirations. The duct may remain open in premature babies leading to heart failure because ductus closure in term babies mainly due to oxygenation, and in preterm babies, oxygenation is impaired due to the having respiratory distress syndrome or hypoxia. This causes persistence of ductus arteriosus. Anima prematurity occurs due to decreased iron stores, vitamin deficiency, and exaggerated physiologic anemia. And retinopathy of prematurity is due to abnormal vascularization due to immaturity and oxygen therapy, leading to partial or complete blindness. This is due to prolonged uh, exposure to oxygen, which causes uh, damage to young blood vessels of the uh, retina of the newborn. This causes retinopathy of prematurity. Metabolic bone disease of prematurity occurs because of lack of substrate and vitamin deficiency, uh, which causes rickettias. Normally, calcium and the phosphate transfers from mother to newborn uh, during third trimester of pregnancy mainly. This causes uh, adequate storage of calcium and the phosphate for term newborn boy. But in preterm babies, they born before adequate transfer of calcium and the phosphate from mother and also vitamin D. This causes rickets of prematurity. When we see long-term problems, the long-term problems or long-term complications are chronic lung disease or bronchopulmonary dysplasia, poor growth and the CNS dysfunction. Chronic lung disease or bronchopulmonary dysplasia occurs due to prolonged ventilation and oxygen toxicity, which results in chronic oxygen dependency. And also growth is restricted due to feeding problems, vitamin and iron deficiency. Uh, preterm babies are also at risk of having uh, different CNS dysfunctions. The most common is uh, due to intraventricular hemorrhage, which causes post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus. This can cause cerebral palsy and also hydrocephalus. Learning problems, deafness, mental abnormality can also be seen. Uh, when we see the management of newborn baby, always proper resuscitation at birth, early stabilization of vital signs, prevention of hypothermia and hypoglycemia in the liver room is related to these good outcomes with minimal complication. If a baby is of good size and vigorous, then by simple cleaning airways, wrap the baby properly and shift to well baby nursery with instruction of early feeding and the monitoring for hypoglycemia and hypothermia. If a baby weight is very low or less than 1 kg, then electively incubate the baby and shift to NICU for ventilator care. Babies weighing 1 to 1.5 kg should also be shifted to NICU for observation and the management of potential complication and the 
uh, issue of feeding. After birth care, maintain thermoneutral environment, maintenance of fluid and electrolyte balance, oxygen administration, feeding, supplementation of iron and the vitamins, protection from infection, early detection and the management of complications of prematurity, and the immaturity of drug metabolism should always consider. Thermoneutral environment is environmental temperature at which heat production and oxygen consumption is minimal, yet the core temperature is maintained within normal range. So we should have to maintain temperature of nursery in a range of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Place the baby incubator and keep humidity at 70%. Temperature of incubator varies with age by setting air temperature or by setting skin temperature of baby. For less than 1 kg, Cert 5 to Cert 7, and for more than 2 kg, Cert 1 to Cert 3 is used. For those between 1 to 2 kg, Cert 2 to Cert 5 is used. Temperature can be maintained by the use of radiant heaters, by wrapping the baby properly, and by the use of mitten on hands and socks on feet and cap on head if nursed in coat. The other is about the issue of fluid and electrolyte balance. Preterm babies need more fluids as compared to full term babies. On the first day, for preterm babies, we should have to start from uh, 60 to 80 ml per kg per day and increase 20 ml per kg per day up to the uh, fifth day. At fifth day, most of the time, we should have to give them around 150 to 160 ml per kg per day. Excessive fluid interferes with closure of ductus arteriosus and uh, uh, decreased amount of fluid also uh, causes dehydration and uh, predispose for electrolyte abnormalities. So we should have to maintain fluid and electrolyte appropriately. Baby should be carefully monitored for hypoglycemia, hypo or hypernatremia, hyperkalemia by frequent blood sample and desire correction. The other is about oxygen administration. Oxygen administration should be carefully monitored in very preterm infants. Because concentration of oxygen more than 40% decreases the risk of lung and the visual toxicity. The, the one that we have said, bronchopulmonary dysplasia and re, uh, retinopathy of prematurity, uh, respectively. The method of feeding should be individualized as varies with weight and the gestational age of infant. The process of oral feeding, in addition to sucking, requires coordination of swallowing, epiglottic closure of larynx, and Normal esophagus motility, a synchronized process which is usually absent before 34 weeks of gestation. So, before uh, 34 weeks of gestation, they does not coordinate those things. So, uh, even if they can feed, it's better to give them by nasogastric tube. If the infant is more than 35 weeks of gestation and weights more than 2 kg, and there is no con uh, contraindication of feeding, like Persistent vomiting, distress, sepsis, seizure, neck, and he can be started on oral feeding, preferably by breast milk or infant formula with bottle or cup and a spoon. If a baby cannot suck and the general condition is better, two feeding is preferred. If very sick or premature, then total or partial parental nutrition is also the choice. The other is about the issue of supplementation of iron and the vitamins. Every preterm infant should receive supplemental vitamins in addition to breast milk until full mixed feeding is established or until their weight is more than 2.25 kg. All preterm babies should receive vitamin K prophylax at birth. Requirement of vitamin A, D, B6, and C is fulfilled by simply prescribing uh, multivitamins that contain those things. For all preterm babies, Iron supplementation should be started at the age of 4 to 8 weeks, a dose of 2 mg per kg per day elemental iron. Before this age, it is not well absorbed and also increases the risk of gastrointestinal infection and also predisposed to vitamin E deficiency hemolysis. So most of the time we start after 1 to 2 months. Due to renal and hepatic immaturity and the diminished renal and hepatic clearance of almost all drugs, Intervals between those should also be extended according to their gestational age. Proper antiseptic measures should be taken in maintenance of nursery, 
incubator and other equipment and in addition proper hand washing cleansing of preterm baby proper cord care are very important all procedures in nursery should be done with strict aseptic measures regarding prognosis it is related to gestation and the birth weight with new advancement in neonatal intensive care in developed countries the survival rate for 24 week gestation is 25 percent but still there is marked disability of survivors 5 to 10 percent of babies with preterm baby uh, weight less than 1.5 kg have major handicaps such as cerebral palsy developmental delay and blindness or deafness risk increases with decreasing gestational age and the weight regarding discharge criteria for preterm baby all premature infants should be taken feed by nipple either by bottle or breastfeed baby should be gaining weight properly around 20 30 gram per day and the temperature should be stabilized in an open coat for more than three days and there should be no recent episodes of apnea or bradycardia and there should be no parental drug administration and it might be converted to oral dosing if it is there so after this we can discharge from hospital to home to continue KMC at home the other issue in premature care is about kangaroo mother care KMC is one way to care for preterm infants who are clinically stable to help reduce the mortality rates for this group of infants KMC is used to stabilize temperature of the baby to increase weight gain to facilitate maternal infant bonding and it reduces human resources and labor costs all stable preterm babies are eligible to start KMC uh, after uh, being treated for major uh, complication or prematurity and KMC should have to continue even after hospital discharge till baby achieves uh, weight around 2.5 kg or till baby becomes uncomfortable in KMC. This is all about prematurity and its complication. Thank you for watching.